Hey guys, I'm Kenny, welcome back to the channel. In this channel, you will learn a lot about Rent to Rent. In this video, we're gonna cover exactly how I got started in Rent to Rent. What did I do? How did I scale it, etc., etc., etc. So stay tuned and you will learn a lot more about my journey. So I was in a supply chain kind of role, program management. I did work my way up to that and I soon realized that climbing the corporate ladder was not fulfilling. I wasn't happy. I was chasing something I didn't really want. There was a lot going on in the job, which I don't really agree with, like office politics and, you know, they want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear what actually they need to be told. Damn! And I, when I say that, I mean like the superior bosses, you know, they, they kind of, it's just, yeah, wasn't for me. Got pissed off with it, went back to the shop floor, went back on shift just so I could think about my future. And, you know, I was the type of person that I would clock out on my contract hours. So come 4 p.m., it's like I don't care what I had on, how important it was. My personal life was always priority over my work life. It should always be for everyone. And I, I can never wrap my head around why people put their job first over their own personal life. It's like, you're just a number at the end of the day. But yeah, off track, just got fed up with the corporate world. Felt like I needed to start my own business so I could have a bit more fulfillment in my life. And that's where I discovered Rent to Rent and that's where it all started. So if you haven't heard of Rent to Rent before, this is where you rent a property from a landlord or through an agent under a company-let management contract. And what that contract is, is basically you're not a tenant, you're a business. So you, it, it just goes under a business contract. That way you're not protected by tenant rights and this is appealing to the landlord because they might have had prior experience that wasn't so good with tenants, long court process, lots of thousands of pounds in debt and with you you're going to provide many benefits. So yeah it's essentially renting a property from a landlord, renting it back out again using two strategies either the room by room basis where you rent them individually to tenants so you rent the property then you rent the rooms out to tenants you essentially become a tenant manager or you take the property and you rent it on airbnb so as a holiday let and either way you should make quite nice profit so that was the business model that really appealed to me it didn't require a large investment to get started why should you consider this well it depends what position you're in you know you can go down the buy to let market, but as we know, you need a 20% deposit and properties these days are so expensive. You need a large investment just to get one property under your belt to rent to a tenant. You haven't learnt the savvy ways of renting room by room or Airbnb. So your profit margins are actually going to be quite small, less than probably £600 per property. And you've invested 20% of the deposit of the purchase price. How this is different is you require a very small amount to get started. All you need to do really is cover the first month's rent and a deposit. Even the deposit can be negotiable. You might have to lift the property up a little bit in terms of paint and a few bits and bobs here and there, but no, nothing drastic. So when I started, I took on a five bed HMO, first month's rent and a five weeks deposit. I come to about three and a half thousand pounds. Then it required between 700 and a thousand pounds to bring it up to a nice standard such as feature walls, you know, bedding kits, lamps, wall art, paint, painting the skirting boards, cleaning it up. Nothing too drastic. So all in all, I probably spent four and a half thousand pounds. Nothing too bad at all. And that property profited each month, 640 pounds profit. I pulled all of my initial investment back out in the first month because I charged the tenants first and last month's rent. So I pulled all of my initial investment back out, which actually gave me the money to go on and pay for the second HMO and the third HMO that I secured the following week. So that's how I got started. So to summarize that, it's a huge difference in terms of investment costs to start, like buy to let or rent to rent. Rent to rent, you can do with 5,000 pounds max to get your first property, which is going to profit as a guidance, minimum 600 pound profit each month. So when I first come across rent to rent, I was very like, this has got to be too good to be true, as with probably most of you would think. But the more I looked into it, and the more Facebook groups I joined and the more YouTube videos I watched and Spotify listening, it's like, okay, this, this is actually everywhere. How come I've never heard of it before? And you try, you know, you're starting to get a bit inspired. You talk to your mates, you talk to your colleagues and they're like, yeah, scam, pyramid scheme, Ponzi scheme. And you're just like, okay, why did I bother telling them? 
But then you start seeing people who are getting into the space and then they're getting properties and you're like, okay, that's awesome, you know? And you're watching interviews with mentees of other programs and then you really start to think, this is real, this is actually real. And you're, you're listening to their stories and how they secured their first property. And all right, it's not easy and they went through challenges and but they got started with, you know, max five thousand pounds. So you start to really believe how to do it yourself. So that's where I was at. I was skeptical at first, thinking, is this too good to be true? And the more I looked into it, I was like, this is awesome. Like this is actually a route to escape the nine to five and become financially free. So I really I was up till like midnight every night just watching interviews and interviews and interviews, Spotify's, YouTube videos, all about rent to rent. Um, and I just couldn't wait to get started. I just didn't know how to get started. How I secured my very first deals or set of deals was I was on my 244th phone call. I was 24 offers deep, so a lot of rejections. It was just trusting the process at this point. I was just viewing one property after the another. So I sat at my dining room table eating my dinner and an email come through and it was uh, an email from the agent saying my offer had been accepted on this property and I was absolutely ecstatic. Like I was buzzing, I couldn't believe it had actually happened to me. Um, and then another email come through saying another property offer has been accepted. And I was just like, oh my God, okay, wow. And then literally minutes later, another email, all from the same agent, three properties that I made offers on, all accepted. My mind was blown. Um, I was very excited, very worried at the same time because the literally the key collection date of these three properties was on the due date of my firstborn. So I was very like, okay, how the hell am I going to make that work? <laughs> it all worked out okay though because Jasper actually arrived two weeks early which gave us enough time to get Sarah settled, get the baby settled, get in a slight routine and then go down and smash out these properties. So literally rinse and repeat. I was very stressed on the first property, trying to get it done as fast as possible, but to a good standard, back and forth to B&Q, you know, the range, Asda, Donnell. Yeah, so I got that property finished, moved the tenants in, collected first and last month's rent up front from all five tenants, which gave me about six and a half thousand pounds back in my account. Then sent the money over to the agent to pay for the following two properties, which I was actually collecting the following week. So then I could, calm down a little bit and be like okay they're paid for those that house is now tenanted like I've done one property I know I can do the others just repeat the process and that's exactly what you do you go into a property it's all empty and professionally cleaned because the agents get that done and then you just chuck everything in so HMOs come furnished um, the second property I actually took on was a four bed HMO so that actually wasn't furnished so I was like Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace. Um, I prepared for this anyway, so my garage was absolutely rammed full of beds, desks, you name it, wall art. And then we just hired a van, took everything down there, painted the walls, got it all done and moved tenants in. Just repeat the process and then literally that was done. Went to the third property. That actually took us 22 hours to turn around. So by the time we got to the third property, we knew exactly what we were doing. We just literally just smashed it out, repeated the process back and forth to Denelm, the range, B&Q, same paint. Like I'm not trying to do every property different. It's like just choose a standard, choose the same paint. You know, tenants love it. It's simple, it's clean, it's fit for purpose. Just keep repeating the process, move tenants in. Once I got those three properties done, I could relax. Like I was like, okay, cool. Like the business is built now. Let's just focus on systemizing it now. During that whole rush like of moving tenants in, I did actually take on what turned out to be a bad tenant because I was in kind of a rush. There was one tenant I skipped the process of referencing on because I was trusting the, the landlord I actually knew. Um, and they told me he was a good tenant. So I took their word for it. I didn't run a credit check, didn't ask for anything. Just took the landlord's word for it because it was a friend, moved him in, tenant like, was okay for about two, three months and then just started to derail and it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. So for me, do not divert from the process of referencing and onboarding tenants, like even from the very get-go, no matter how stressed you are, how much of a rush you are in to fill your rooms, 
stick to the process, make sure you fill those rooms properly with referencing, credit checks, landlord checks, employer checks. Like, Use lettingref.co.uk and you won't go too far wrong. Throughout the whole process of starting Rent to Rent and com comparing to the person I used to be, it's like, I used to j I can't believe I've actually done it for so long, you know, worked in the same company for 16 years and was just going about the week and then kind of living for the weekend. Looking back on that, it's like, I, I feel like I wasted so much time, even though my journey has been brilliant and I wouldn't really like to change it. I just wish I could have started a lot sooner because now I know the importance and the value of time and discipline because you learn so much in starting and scaling a business about yourself and the way I feel like the world actually wants you to work is be very disciplined, hard working, but not just in your job, like it's up to you. If you, if you wanna climb the career ladder, then the same attributes kind of apply, like heavily disciplined, going above and beyond, valuing time, you know, these are all things that I learned and my mindset had changed so much. I read the book Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker, like the best book ever. If you've not read this book, find it on YouTube, you'll find the whole thing on YouTube or just buy the book and read it. Honestly, it changed my life and the way I looked at things and the way I still look at things is I always just want to be better than I was last year. And if I'm going to start something, I got to decide, am I going to be consistent with it before I even start? Because I don't want my mindset to be affected if I quit or give up because I haven't fully decided if I'm going to be consistent. That's why a lot of people quit when they join the gym in like January. By February, March, they've, they've long gone. It's like they haven't said to themselves, am I going to be consistent? And then when they give up or quit, it's like that's just one extra lie that they've told themselves. It's like... So the next time they commit to something, in the back of their minds, then they know they quit on something before. So that's one thing I've heavily learned and I apply to every, absolutely everything, everything. If I'm going to start something, I need to know, am I going to be consistent with it? Why did I start coaching and start my own mentoring program? It's because I feel like I've always been like a coach, even though I didn't actually realize it. Even when I was a mentee of another program, you know, for Rent to Rent, I would host a weekly webinar, like a Zoom, with all of the other mentees to not only hold myself accountable, it's just to hold them accountable as well and kind of pull them to success. I, I don't know, I just naturally did it. Uh, mainly to, like I say, hold myself accountable, but I, I firmly believe if you're going to be a coach, you need to be a coach before you're a coach. I've always just been wanting to help others. Um, if I'm doing something and I believe like this is the best thing for me, and somebody else is interested, then I would tell them all about it, try and drag them, hold them accountable. It even comes down to like diets. I'm, you know, I do the most extreme diets. I don't just dabble or like slightly calorie deficit and lose weight over the time. It's like, if I'm gonna do something, I wanna do everything to the extreme. And um, my plasterer who actually plastered our house, you know, he was severely overweight and he come to me and said, Kenny, I need your help. Um, I need you to help me lose weight. And I said, yeah, just do this just do this. And I didn't give him an overcomplicated meal plan. I literally just said, just do this. He lost seven stone in about 12 months. And yeah, still to this day, he thanks me for pretty much saving his life. So yeah, if you're going to be a coach, I firmly believe you need to be a coach before you're even a coach or even considering it. You can't just get like, oh, I've got five rent to rents now. I know what I'm going, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to, I'm going to coach. It's like, there's a lot to do when it comes to coaching actually um it's not all good sides there's a lot of downsides um you know you're responsible for teaching people how to make money and making sure they make money and not losses so it does come with its responsibilities and to be honest i absolutely love it i love coaching i love teaching i love building the business it gives me massive fulfillment helping others i know that's what everybody says but it just does huge fulfillment in when I see the look on like a video call of a mentee's face of when they've just had their first offer accepted, it bring, it floods it back for me. I'm just like, yeah, I know how that feels. Absolutely life changing. And now your life is going to change thanks to my training and your consistency and your discipline. So yeah, huge, huge, huge um, fulfillment for me in doing that. All I would say is if you're considering rent to rent, like trust me, it's an amazing journey amazing strategy 
all I've ever done is put in three and a half thousand pounds to my business account I've never funded anymore. So just to recap, you only need five thousand pounds max to start in rent to rent. That that will include taking on your first property, whether it's a HMO or a serviced accommodation. That includes buying all the furniture as well. Maybe not so so much for serviced accommodation, it depends on the spec you're going for, but I would I would stick to the point that five thousand pounds max will see you take on your first property in terms of rent to rent. If you're only on my YouTube and you're not in my Facebook group, you can find me on Rise Up Rent to Rent or just type in Kenny Pittman on Facebook, follow me, click the link to the group. If not, just go on Facebook and put in Rise Up Rent to Rent. That's pretty much where I hang out. That's where all my content goes first. So be sure to head over there and join that group. I will leave a link in the description to further free training. It's a 12 minute long video it shows you exactly how to start rent to rent the steps to take and yeah be sure to head over to that and to watch that so that will be in the description i would love to hear your thoughts or your journey and how you started or your thoughts on rent to rent thanks for tuning in if you have any thoughts on rent to rent please be sure to air your thoughts in the comments and i will see you guys next time